Tesla is insane with Neuralink attached to your brain. Let's dive right into this video and then also talk to someone that's life has been changing. How many lives have you changed? Or are you just a hater? Everyone hates Tesla. Let's get into it. It's electric. Okay, if you've been following Elon Musk companies closely, you know that Neuralink is one of his thousand companies and this chip and people's brains allowed that person to control a computer just using their brain. Just Controlling the computer using the brain. What's the point of it? This guy who cannot move his body is controlling the computer, able to play a video game with his family members, with his friends, with his loved ones. That's what's the cool part about it. Let's continue. And just using just their thoughts, their intent. And Neuralink just announced that they're going to have a new chip that's going to allow people to see again. It's going to restore vision in the same way that the Neuralink they have installed in the first patient, Nolan Arbaugh, who was on my channel a couple months ago. This chip is going to help people with blindness or with issues seeing. And over time, this company looks to fix a bunch of stuff. Dementia, Alzheimer's. It's going to allow you to connect to the freaking internet with your brain and have infinite knowledge. It's kind of insane, honestly. It's, it's completely ridiculous. But what's even more interesting and something that I don't see talked about is the research that this chip is going to allow for us to understand the human brain. And this is one of the topics that Nolan and I talked about about a couple months ago on my podcast. I want to highlight this clip from that conversation because I know a lot of you missed it. This company is not just going to try to cure vision and Alzheimer's and dementia and connect us to a freaking AI brain or whatever, but it's also opening up a brand new field of research about the human brain and really understanding how the human brain works. We barely know what this thing is doing half the time. And now with Neuralink, we're going to be able to learn so much more. So, Ooh, that's an interesting perspective, right? Let alone talking about everything that it's going to do for people currently, like restoring vision, right? Also, Alzheimer's and everything else. Now, of course, this is projections. This is what we think it's going to be able to achieve. It has been able to achieve so much so far. But if we start having a conversation of not only are these experimentations or these first trials going to allow us not only to do these things and see if it works, but also understand a lot more about the human brain. The most important asset is not real estate. The most important asset is not Tesla, even though it's going to be a lot of money. The most important asset in the world is the human mind. It's the most important natural resource, more important than oil, more important than gold is the human mind. Because from the human mind, it has created everything and made use of gold and oil and etc. So this is going to be a very fascinating one. Let's dive right back into this video. So here's the highlight from that conversation. What, what I didn't appreciate up until this point, Nolan, is like just a level of insight you guys are gathering into how the brain works that we didn't previously understand by way of having a combination of enough threads in the brain, having a model and somebody like you that's able to communicate exactly what's happening. Like that is opening up a whole world of data that this is, I'm having so much yeah. fun right now. One thing, one thing that they constantly talked about at the beginning more so was just how excited they were to finally have this in a person. And I'm like, yeah, guys, like I'm excited too. It's really cool. And they're like, no, like you don't understand. We've been working with monkeys for years and it's really hard when a monkey is doing something on the screen and you're asking a monkey to complete a task. It's really hard to know if they're doing what you want them to do. Like you can tell if a cursor goes from point A to point B that, okay, they are intending that to happen. But if you want them to go from point A to point B and they go in a completely different direction or the cursor doesn't move, you don't know if it is the algorithm freaking out or if it's the monkey like losing focus or anything like that. You don't know like what's going on. You don't know because there's no feedback. Yeah, right. The monkey can't tell you nothing unless you're Ace Ventura. Like then he can talk to you, right? From the monkey. There's no conversation going on. And it's something that I've really come to appreciate about this whole process is that having someone who can vocalize what's going on is invaluable. And being able to explain to them the things that like I'm experiencing and feeling, it's really, really amazing for the technology and for the field. And getting this into people is just so important. I'm lucky, I think, that I'm able to at least conceptualize and explain things in a way that I feel like people are able to understand. And I've been really blessed with that, like being able to communicate with people in a way that I feel like really brings people to like eye level. And I've felt like Neuralink has really benefited from that as well, as much as I have from all of the whole study and everything. But it's just been so nice to have that level of communication and to be able to show them like exactly what is going on with me. It's something that I've been trying for eight years to explain to people the fact that I can still feel my hand. I can still feel the fact that I'm trying to move and I can feel all of my fingers wiggling at any point. And people will be like, okay, like phantom pain, phantom limbs, like we get it. But you're not actually doing anything. It's, yeah, I know I'm not, but I can feel it all. And then to see that visually on a screen with like my neurons firing real time, it's so validating. And then to be able to show them, 
Wow, that's very interesting. Okay, so there's the level of communication going on. And then not only just him being able to communicate that, and most people saying, oh, well, that faint phantom pain. Well, this way, it's like, no, well, you could see the brain waves. This is actually me, right? And so there's a disconnect. And that's real fascinating. And just scientific experimentation and exploration in itself to be able to discover those extra data points. Huh. That's very interesting. Let's continue. I'm like, this is exactly what I'm feeling. And this is why the model is behaving this way. And I believe that this part of my body is resulting in this part of the algorithm being confused. It's just, it's so interesting. And the amount of data that we're collecting, I don't think they'll be able to analyze it in the next few years, maybe not ever in our lifetime with the amount of people that are working at Neuralink right now. They need to grow by 10 times as much in order to start analyzing like all of the data that we've collected. I've already made them re revamp their whole system like three or four times because the amount of data that I've collected has just like, broken all of their, their like databases, whatever they're like, how robust their system is. They just don't have enough. I don't know. There's not, yeah, they, they, they need can't to keep up with the flood of data and just yeah, the yeah. results. I think that's the, and that's very interesting. They can't keep up with the flood of the data. Also too, there's massive amounts of ways you got to organize and label that data. And it's probably just amazing for everybody. You know, dealing with monkeys is one thing, but dealing with a live human, it definitely changes the game, man. Now, let's keep going. This is exciting. I mean, this is exciting to me. There's going to be people who are saying that this is bad, right? Like, oh, this is against God or nature. And God has given us the power of the mind. And God has given us the power to rule in this world. And if we can bring back human beings from not being able to do X, Y, and Z, and we can bring them into the forefront, then I'm, I'm sure you might be saying that if you could walk and you could do everything else, and you're blessed with your actual healthy body. But for people who can't see, and people who are forgetting, I think that they might have to veto what you're saying, because for them, it's really a choice of quality of life. As, impress like, as impressive as this whole thing has been, Nolan, it still feels like it's massively underappreciated for exactly the reason that you described. It's, and it's so esoteric, right? It's not something that I think most of the public, as soon as you say, you say machine learning, most people are like, I'm done. And it's not like they're dumb. It's just like they're busy. Like they, got, they only got time to figure out what the hell machine learning is or a model. But it's like th the fact that you're able to gather so much data around how the brain behaves and be able to validate so much of what you were feeling, but weren't able to tie to data, right? No, nah, that dumb. I'm sorry. I had to slide that up in there. It just really shows how early we are in, in, in studying the brain. It's still now. Yeah. And that's totally. what's crazy. It's like 2024. We seem to know so much about the most mundane stuff, but when it comes to what arguably could be the most important, like the thing that separates us from every other species that's ever existed on this planet, it seems like, we still know almost nothing. And facts, facts. You know more about Final Fantasy football teams and know more about twerking and know more about dancing and know more about BS, but you don't know about this. You know more about LeBron and how he feels and what kind of food he ate in high school, but you don't know about the human brain. Yeah, okay. And we got experts around just watching people put a ball in the hoop. Okay. And bro, like you are leading it. What the hell? How's that feel? <laughs> yeah, I don't think much about it. I'm really Come excited. <laughs> no, I'm really excited because in my mind, I get, I feel the same way. I'm like, why, why isn't this gaining more traction? Why aren't people more like pumped up about this? Because the amount that we're going to learn about the brain from, I, I know this is all, like in the tech field, people. Let me be honest. Most normies aren't using their brain. That's why they don't care. Let me say the truth, man. This is obstacles to opportunity and everyone hates Tesla. Most normies aren't using their brain, so they don't care. They're like, man, he trying to use all that brain power. I'm trying to use less brain power. So that's just the facts of the matter. People just learned how to read. Okay, guys, I always tell you this. All right. <laughs> so that's what it is. People talk about this in regards to like Elon Musk and the AI and all their future capabilities and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. But in my mind, I'm like, guys, the amount that we're going to learn about the brain from this, it could change like how we interact with the brain and what we do in like the medical field. It could change like everything about what we understand about ourselves even. And so it's just, it's so exciting to me. And I just love being a part of it. I feel like I'm just giddy being a part of it all the time. I'm like, I'm just so like the fact that I even got selected was just bizarre. So in, in my mind, I'm just like, I'm just trying to enjoy the ride, but it's not, I don't know. I don't know. It's just really cool. It's really cool. He said, I'm just trying to enjoy the ride. Please enjoy the ride, sir. And you definitely are in good spirit about it. And that's a good thing, right? Somebody could be salty and be like, I regret it. I prefer being paralyzed and having no access to the internet. So he's not like that. So <laughs> we appreciate that you appreciate the opportunity. You appreciate everybody at Neuralink. And guys, I want to show you this real quick. Neuralink is an opportunity as a private company if you're a accredited investor to invest in said instruments. I'm not telling you to invest because I don't want you guys coming after me. 
like y'all came after Tom Brady. So at the end of the day, look into it, do your due diligence, but tapping into the brain and actually making changes like this, Tesla is always leading the edge. And of course, this is not Tesla. This is Neuralink, a different company, but Elon Musk is doing the most. And I add this to show you that everyone hates Tesla. Everyone hates Elon Musk and they hate Neuralink too, I guess. But at the end of the day, we're making big changes. I'm going to have to put this up on the screen. Elon for the win once again. I see you guys on the next one. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get this electricity. And remember, everyone hates Tesla, but the future, it's electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie.